Hi everybody, this is day two. I hope you're having really good fun so far. Today we've got a different game for you. As your mums and dads will know, you will need two, either a bucket or a laundry basket, whatever big that you can fit a toilet roll in and a toilet roll. Okay, so this is what the game is today. We'll start here and you put them two meters apart. Keep it on your head and you have to balance and drop it into the bucket. And every time you get it in the bucket, you get a point. And then you lift it out, put it back in your head, and come to this one. There's two points. So we're going to time you. You have two minutes to do it. And count how many you can get into the bucket. Sorry, you have one minute to do it. Okay, Jordan, you go to the blue bucket. Let me the pink. And ready. Has your family ever asked to borrow something from a neighbor? Maybe some flour or sugar or perhaps a garden tool? A poor widow once borrowed some unusual things from her neighbors. The poor widow came to Elisha with tear stains on her face. My husband was a good man who loved the Lord, but now he is dead, she said. The man my husband owed money to says if I don't pay him, he will take away my two sons to be his slaves. How can I help you, Elisha asked gently. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Nothing, the widow answered. I have nothing except for a little oil. Elisha thought about her need. Go to all your friends and neighbors, he said, and borrow as many jars as you can. Then go home and shut the door. Pour the oil from your jar into all the empty borrowed jars. So the widow and her sons filled their house with their neighbor's empty jars. Then the woman shut the door, and she began to pour oil from her jar into the first borrowed jar. The oil kept flowing, and soon that first jar was full. And she poured into the next jar, and she poured into the jar after that. And she kept going and going, and soon she lost count. She just kept pouring until all the jars were full. Bring me another jar, she said. There aren't any more jars, mother, her boys exclaimed. You filled them all. The woman's eyes sparkled. She hurried out of the house and ran to find Elisha. I did exactly what you said. I borrowed as many empty jars as I could, and now they're all filled with oil, and I still have oil in my jar. Elisha smiled. Go and sell the oil, he said. Pay back what your husband owed and you will have money left over for you and your sons to live on. The widow woman praised the Lord for the miracle of the oil. She thanked God for taking care of her, and she thanked him for Elisha and her neighbors. That day, the widow and her sons learned that they could trust the Lord to take care of them. We can trust God to send the right people to take care of us too. Boys and girls, God wants us to be good neighbors as well. How can you be a good neighbor, and how can you help others today? Hi everyone, what a great story. The woman in the story today had faith that God would look after her and her sons. Have you ever needed God's help? 
You know, God's always with us. He wants to help us if we need him. He wants to be our friend. Who do you care about? Mum? Dad? Your granny? Granddad? Friends? I'm sure you've missed them all during lockdown. Have you been using FaceTime? Zoom? Maybe speaking to them on the telephone? Have you visited your granny and granddad in their garden? Or sent a nice card or a picture to them? When we feel a bit lonely, not seeing everyone, God cares for us and says he will always be there for us. He'll never leave us. God cared for the woman in the story and gave her exactly what she needed and more. Now let us pray. Thank you, God, for taking care of us, always being there when we need you. Show us how we can help others too, just like Elisha helped the woman in our story today. Help us tell others that you want to be their friend too. Amen. Hello everyone, I'm Heather and I'm going to show you the craft for today. In the story today, Elisha the prophet advised the lady, the widow, that she should collect jars, she should fill the jars with oil and she should sell them to get food for her and her children. So we're going to make a craft today using a jar. Now you can choose which one you'd like to make. Our holiday Bible club this year is called going Caribbean. So I thought we'd make some Caribbean fruit with our jam jars and we can make a holder. You can keep your pencils, your sweeties, your beads, your bits of Lego, anything you want in your jar. So you can decide if you want to make Mr. Melon or Mrs. Pineapple. All right, I'm going to show you how to make Mrs. Pineapple first. So if you take your piece of paper and your jar, you're going to see how tall your jar is from the bottom to the side straight edge bit. So I've taken my piece of paper and I'm making a wee fold here. Then I'm going to fold that back and just check that that fills the straight glass bit of your jar. I think it will. So I'm matching up my edges to get a straight line. And then I'm going to cut out this bit, right? So I've cut out the bit and I've coloured it yellow for Mrs. Pineapple. Now, to get the brown lines, I'd ask everyone if they could have a ruler ready. And if you've got a brown colour, felt tip, crayon, pencil, colouring pencil. And we're going to go diagonal. So if your page is straight, we're going to draw lines like X's right across this way. Then we're going to go the other way. So I'm going to draw my first few lines and then I'll show you what I've done. I'm going to one side of the ruler, then I'm going to the other side of the ruler. Then I'm going to match my ruler up again with the line and draw another piece of the pineapple. And I'm just going to keep going right to the end. And then I'm going to turn my ruler the other way. Here we go. And now I've got my pineapple with its brown edges on the outside. So that's how you would make your skin for your pineapple. And then take your jar and put some glue on it and glue it down and then you could draw four leaves. I've just coloured three in. Once you've coloured the four leaves in, you could glue them together first. I glued my four leaves together first and then I put a bit of glue on the back and I stuck my leaves to the top of my pineapple. Then I coloured two circles, leaving little dots of white for the eyes to look shiny and happy. And I left a little white bit down here for the tongue. 
These two would be the cheeks. You can leave them white or you can colour them in. So I cut those out and I stuck them on to Mrs Pineapple. There you go. And you'll notice I didn't have enough jam jars, so I did use a pasta jar. So any glass jar at all will do. And that is Mrs Pineapple. Now, Mr Melon is a little bit easier, I think, but there's a bit more cutting with it. So again, you take your piece of paper, measure to see how tall your jar is, and then cut your piece of paper off. And when you've got your strip of paper, like I have here, I'm going to use my ruler to draw two lines. Can you see the two lines at the bottom? Now, any of you who are good at measuring and using rulers, I, they are just one centimetre each because my jar is not very tall. But perhaps the mummies and daddies can help you if you don't rule with centimetres yet to rule two lines at the bottom. When you've done that, if you've got a green, colour the bottom line green, leave the middle line white and colour the top red. And once you've coloured it red, these little black dots are the seeds in the melon. So you add some seeds to your melon. Then when you finish that, again, just the same as last time, you can either cut out the eyes, the mouth and some cheeks, or I thought if it was Mrs. Melon, she might like some pink rosy cheeks. So I didn't give Mr. Melon any cheeks. And I actually just drew these with black felt tip. So you can decide if you want to cut out your face or you want to just draw it on for Mr. Melon. I hope you have fun making the melon um, or the pineapple or maybe both if it's a wet day. And then you can decide what you're going to keep in your jars. And you can think of the story where the lady filled all the jars with oil and she was able to sell them to get food to look after her children. I hope you have fun making your pencil pots, sweetie pots, whatever you decide. Bye bye. Hi boys and girls, welcome back. Just wondering, can you remember our memory verse from yesterday? Kate and I are going to say it just to give you a wee reminder and see can you join in, okay? The Lord your God is with you, the mighty one will save you. Well done. So we're going to have a go at singing that um, a couple of times and then we're going to learn the next little bit. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty one will save you. Okay, one last time and then we're going to go on to the next two lines. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty one will save you. Fantastic job. Okay, the next line, if I can remember it. He will rejoice. Oh yes. <laughs> okay, so let's say it first and then we'll go over the action. So he will rejoice over you. He will rejoice over you. Okay, so listen again and then say it with Kate. He will rejoice over you. He will rejoice over you. You will rest, rest in his love. You will rest, rest in his love. You will rest rest in his love. You will rest, rest in his love. So let's put that together. I'm going to say those two lines and then you repeat them with Kate. He will rejoice over you. You will rest, rest in his love. He will rejoice over you. You will rest, rest in his love. Okay, so the actions for that bit is he will rejoice over you. Okay, he, he will, will rejoice, rejoice over you. you. 
So for rejoice, it's a little clap over, it's like coming over the hill and then you. So let's try that again with me after two. One, two. He will rejoice over you. One more time. He, he will, will rejoice, rejoice over you. you. Well done. And the last bit then, you will rest. So put your thumbs on your chest for rest. You will rest, rest in his love. Okay, so say that with me. You will rest, rest in his love. One more time. You will rest, rest in his love. Okay, so I'm going to put those two lines together with the actions and then you do them after me. He will rejoice over you. You will rest, rest in his love. He will rejoice over you. You will rest, rest in his love. Okay, now we're going to put all four lines together. Again, it's quite fast. Kate and I will sing it and then you can join in the second time. The Lord your God is with you. today and then we'll go over it again tomorrow. Well, that was a busy morning. I'm sure you all had a ball. And what did you think of Sam in the warm-ups? Could you give me a thumbs up if you thought she was really good? Thumbs in the middle if okay, and thumbs down if you thought, mm, I think we should give her a mud pie later in the week. What do you think? We'll see what happens. So today in the story, we heard about the widow and the jars and how God cares for us. So for your challenge today, I simply want you even just to say to someone, I love how you care for me. Or you can actually show them how much you care by helping someone with something. But before we go, boys and girls, we're going to pray. So let's have arms out. Arms up, clap at the top and bring your hands down and eyes closed. And today I want you to say the prayer after me. Dear Father, I thank you that you care for me. Please help me to show how I care for others. Amen. All right, everyone, can't wait to see you back tomorrow for Going Caribbean. Bye.